about 80 miles that way, straight out, there is a seamount that has never been mapped before. We're hoping that it's full of coral in a deeper type of reef called a mesophotic coral reef. So our friends at the Central Caribbean Marine Institute, or CCMI, brought us out here to make a bathymetric map, or kind of like a topographic map for the seafloor of this seamount. But we've had a little bit of a problem. Hurricane Barrel on the move after battering the island of Jamaica over. With winds recorded of nearly 150 miles an hour. In Hurricane Barrel now making its way toward the Cayman Islands after barreling the natural. Fortunately, our lovely Grand Cayman here escaped the hurricane relatively unscathed. But we're supposed to be running over on a small boat to Little Cayman. And the seas are about eight foot right now. So we're gonna have to try and play it by ear here. We'll see what unfolds in the next week. I have no idea what's gonna happen. Uh, welcome to Sea Saturated. Uh, for which we are in critical need for support. Um, there's several messages are sent uh, over the weekend and uh, fall. You do get a call, please. Really okay, we are having troubles with our tide gauge. We need this tide gauge to be able to reference all of our data to because there's not a whole lot of infrastructure here on Grand Cayman for like surveying stuff. <clears throat> um, we're gonna stay here on Grand Cayman for a little while because of the weather. So we're gonna try and set up this tide gauge if it works and maybe survey some local kind of archaeological sites to help out with our local museum here. It's working. It's like the one piece in the entire field kit that we don't have a and that's extra of. Get in the water and that's yeah, that's what dropped. <laughs> Easy money. All right. So everything on our sonar is all set. We're gonna go out to a couple of our local reef sites here just to get the system kind of dialed in make sure everything's happy. This amount of time that we have here on Grand isn't really too bad because it just gives us time to set everything up and make everything like really perfect. But it would be really nice. Uh, we're hoping to get to Little and possibly to Pickle maybe tomorrow the next day. We're hoping for a weather window tomorrow for the guys <laughs> to get the boat over to Little. We're hoping for one day on site on Pickle Bank. But for now, let's go take a look at some local resites. Z, uh, what's the word of the day? The word of the day? Yogurt. What? <laughs> That's <a> terrible. <laughs> the word of the day is... Never mind, Z. The phrase of the I day. I think that's it. I'll leave you to be the correct one. <laughs> okay. Voice over Grant here with a little bit of context. Um, that big thing that I was putting together back there is called a multi-beam sonar. It sends out sound and listens for it to come back several times per second. And that helps us build a super detailed 3D map of the seafloor. In this case, our lovely turtle reef on Grand Cayman. This little ledge here is actually where I put the tie gauge. But what if we took all of this equipment to a place that has never been mapped before? Holy shit. This is 
The drone. The, the drone slowly. freaks me out every time. <laughs> it's the drone fighting the wind. Yeah. Okay. Well, the data from yesterday is really looking amazing. Like, I was not expecting for it to be this good. Amazing. Let me show you real quick. This is the reef site that we mapped yesterday. Um, it's just shown in kind of like a 3D grid format. And um, we produced all of this from our sonar data yesterday. So here you can actually see the kind of mini wall that drops from about 35-ish to 60 feet up here in the red and yellows. And then it hits a sand flat and then there's some sperm groove coral. And then it drops off this big wall down to a couple thousand meters, which is super cool. And we can see all of it clear as day with our stuff. This gives me lots of hope for what is coming. Hopefully tomorrow we're gonna try and get out to pickle. Um, let's hope the weather cooperates. We're probably gonna get smoked. After two years of trying and a whole other trip to the Cayman Islands that I'm not even going to go into, no comment. we finally made it out to Pickle Bank, a seamount about halfway between the Cayman Islands and Cuba that has never been properly mapped. I was running all the equipment, so it was tough to get footage, but we managed to get a bunch of cross sections of the seamount, and we ran a lot of the edge of it too. There was so much coral and a ridiculous amount of fish, so naturally we had to go see it for ourselves after the mapping was done. For reference, this is 90 feet or 28 meters of water, and you can just look down off the side of the boat and see everything. I was absolutely losing my mind. As if the 10 hour day out there wasn't enough, Robin took Nico and me out for a little night dive just to cap it all off. And it was incredible. I will definitely be back here. Yesterday was insane. Um, we did it. We got out to Pickle and um, got a lot of the place covered. Not everything we had hoped. We only had one day on site this trip, so we made the most out of it. We did a couple of kind of transects along and across the seamount, so we got a really good idea of the shape of it and also kind of what type of relief how big these coral bombings are and ultimately prepared the ecologists really well for when they come to dive on the site. This has been an amazing trip, um, but there is one more slight complication here. We have to figure out how to get all of this gear that came over on the boat back to Grand Cayman on Twin Otter airplane. A moment of truth. Uh. <laughs> oh no. No, I'll be here. Do you mind if you bust your bag up? Is it, yeah, will it bend? Oh, there we go. It's in now. It's in. It's in. <laughs> they'll, they'll, just, they'll just drag it behind. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> did you get that? No, I absolutely did. <laughs> Th 
Thank you for hanging for this episode. I still cannot believe that we <laughs> just got all of our equipment over here back to Grand. Um, that was crazy. I've never had to do that before. Seeing these reefs in our data and being able to like visualize them in a way that is way broader than the human eye can really see is super powerful. But I think what's even more powerful for me is to be able to experience them firsthand out diving and um, it makes me really want to continue to work on protecting them. And that's part of why I'm here, bringing this stuff to you. So hopefully it inspires you to start a conversation or um, maybe go diving if you're interested. This trip was pretty explorational, ex exploration in nature. And we didn't know at all what we were really going to find out there. We didn't know the depth of the reef. We did. All of this stuff we're really learning for the first time. And it's super important because we can't know what we need to protect if we don't even know what's there at all. So I'm really proud to be a part of the team that has helped at least just the start of that protection journey for this beautiful untouched reef that is still under threat from climate change. We're out of here, but the ecologists who we actually ran into in the airport are just getting started. They're gonna be looking at what type of coral or fish, doing some tech rebreather dives on these sites, which I'm so jealous of, but good for them. If you enjoyed this one, you might be interested in what we found on Corsica. I think um, that was a pretty cool episode, so I'm gonna leave a link for you. In the meantime, I'll see you real soon from back home. It's gonna be hot. Bye.